after Bruno, the, the audience wasn't ready for Bruno to leave yet. He was just so beloved. Yeah. Yeah. And the business was not drawing. It was starting to go down okay. and down because Bruno wasn't wrestling anymore. Okay. And do Bob... Think, do you think Backlund was a, was a poor draw in comparison? Well, well, Bob just couldn't fill his shoes. You know, I mean, in those days, Bob, who was an, a good wrestler, a great athlete, and he was in such great shape that he didn't really look that big. He was, you know, like in such great physical condition, but he didn't look like a gorilla. Okay. So people were used to seeing Bruno versus Ivan Koloff yeah. or Professor Tanaka or Killer Kowalski. And now Bob Backlund's out there that looks like a high school kid at, you know, 220 pounds. And the people just didn't buy it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just wasn't ready yet. So, so two questions for you on Backlund. So we grew up, that was the era we really yeah. grew up, right? Yep. Um, oh, yeah. We grew up disliking Backlund, oh. always looking for the heel to win. But as we've gotten older, we have this huge respect for back true but i've heard true. you in the past on some other interviews saying that um two questions for you that you felt that bob almost bankrupt roughly <laughs> the wwe is that is and that... um why did C if you felt that way why did senior feel like he had to keep the strap on backland oh well you know i i don't know and i don't know about, about the bankruptcy thing i know that the business was going down okay. and down Fair. and i also knew that the way the the business was in those days vince mcmahon senior and needed a couple partners but they were also involved in other things they financed boxers they were at the horse track i mean they were promoters promoters but if their but if their wrestling business went down that hurt them so they you know would do whatever they could to make the most money they you know could and it was a time I saw business going down. I knew the people were ready to not accept the fact Bruno's done. Mm -hmm. And I was a kid who was known as Bruno's protege. Right. Even other yeah. promoters would say, hey, what's that kid's name, uh, that Bruno's protege? Oh, well, Larry, maybe we'll bring him in. So I said, you know, I knew whoever could talk Bruno back into the ring for one more thing yeah. would become a big star. Plus all the yeah. publicity came out of New York in the magazines. So if I could get Bruno to do this, it would make my career. Yep. So here's a poor guy, broke his neck recently. <laughs> Did I care? Hell no! Nice. <laughs> but I was taught not to care. I was taught to do what was good for business. And I realized, you know, for me, good business, if I get back to the ring with Bruno or anybody, I would be the guy. So you go to Bruno first. So I took a long shot and went okay. to Bruno because nothing's going to happen. Did you he... go through the weeds on the no, side of the house? No. <laughs> Low crawl. This is a big favor. He might have to crawl up on this one. I don't no, know. No, I just ran it past him. And, okay. And he thought about it for a while. Okay. Because I, I, you know, but then... How long was a while? Did, were you like, like no, maybe, squirming for maybe a, a month, Maybe like a month or so. And then, Ooh, that's a long while. And then finally he came up with a way to do it. I mean, like, okay. it was my idea, so but Bruno it. was the one that... Okay. And along with that was the secret of programming. Yeah. The secret of programming is what sells out arenas every month. The Thank secret you. of programming is kind of what's lost today. Thank you. Oh, you Thank boy. you. Bingo. Thank you, Larry. You know, I mean, Thank you got you. A, you got an awesome...